So, our next question was kind of um, based off the um, the back of uh, your work around the farms market. Um, have groups evolved as a consequence of your mission to the stallholders? I'm, I'm guessing that question is around, what, you know, uh, has it grown, really? Mm. Um, and this was a year ago now. I've kind of been out of the market for a year now. Um, I don't think so, um, in that uh, there haven't been a whole bunch of little um, discipleship-type groups grown up. The, the church, St Luke's Church, was had transitioned itself from a traditional church to which about 35 people used to come in a, in a, it was a horrible building really. So transitioned itself from there into a, into a fully missional church with no building and no visible means of support really. So it was a fragile thing and we lost most of the congregation in the transition. So for going from about 35 to about 10, um, it was a small, fragile thing that lasted, you know, while I was there for a couple of years, and then has now been taken on by somebody else who I think will do a probably do a much better job than me actually. So, um, but it did do what it what it did um, move from was uh, just being something that was we we work on the farmers market all day Sunday, and I'd do some stuff around the the high street, you know, in terms of some chaplaincy stuff and some hanging about stuff and some working with the, um, the police and with uh, the business forum. Um, so there were those kinds of connections that, um, that we were making that were quite valuable really. But then a community house started up with St Luke's after I'd left actually. Uh, so there was an opportunity to get a community house in which the church then began to meet. Uh, and which was, um, uh, the idea of that was to kind of uh, develop a, a model of neighbourliness, we used to say. So, um, no, it hasn't grown off into a whole lot of little offshoots, but it's still there and I think it's it's growing and developing in its understanding and identity. Um, fragile, though, that, 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 that is. And I think that's one of the things that you learn as you spend time with folks who are doing anything that's highly missional, is it just takes flame and ages. just takes ages. And these things are fragile for a long time. Okay, uh, oh, moving um, on a little bit, uh, someone's asked the question is, how do you talk to someone once you've um, built up confidence and you've got to know them a little bit, um, who has no knowledge of church and Christianity, someone not coming with the, the baggage perhaps that some of us have? Mm, generally it's pretty easy really. My, um, most folks are quite happy to talk about um, anything. Um, see, the thing that I think... Um, Christians are often afraid of is they're off, they're afraid of being a Christian. <laughs> if that sounds a little bit weird, um, but they don't really want to talk about um, Jesus because they feel like they haven't got all the answers, you know. Mm. And people are going to ask them really hard questions mm. that they haven't got the answers for, and so they don't initiate conversations themselves about um, becoming a Christian, or they don't identify themselves as being a Christian. Mm. But if you're just an ordinary kind of a person like I am, um, and you've been trying to follow Jesus, then you will have a whole lifetime stories that um, you're able to draw on and share with folks. Everybody's got a story, you know, and all it is um, is about telling your story. And people will often ask you a question mm. that you just need to answer as honestly and as authentically as you can. And if you don't know the answer, well, then you just, oh, I don't know the answer to that, you know. Um, but you can tell them the story about you and Jesus. And I think that's the intriguing thing that folks want to actually know about. You say you're a Christian. Oh, well, then what's the point of going to church? Isn't it boring every Sunday? Waste of time? Well, yeah, oftentimes it is, you know. It can be incredibly boring in churches on Sunday mornings. And why would anybody want to go? But when you start and tell them about what your life with Jesus means to you and how walking with Jesus has changed you over the years and the level of depth of spirituality that has grown over the years, they're an easy conversation to have and they're a conversation that people often want to have but don't often find ways or people with whom they can have those kinds of conversations. So you become a gift to them. Um, you know, if you don't have to just bowl in with, I'm a Christian, are you? Blah, 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 you know. 
have a conversation, ask questions, let them ask you questions and don't shy away from the fact that you are a Christian, you know, just be authentic about that. Mm. Okay, re and reflecting back on your um, time in Wolfenstein, what was the, the biggest or the hardest problem you had to overcome as you were thinking about uh, fresh expressions of church, of doing things a bit differently? Um, biggest problem? Um, probably, initially, um, closing the church down. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and, the, and the <laughs> The thing was, folks would say, well, if we're going to move out of this building, what are we going to move into? Where are we going to worship? What building are we going to have? And, and it was like, it was such the wrong question to ask. And it was the wrong question because here are about 30-odd Christians who would come together on a Sunday morning in a, in a cold, smelly, horrible building that nobody used to turn up to. Nobody else, apart from the church community, would come to with fairly boring traditional worship, to be honest. Um, so why would you want to replicate that anywhere else? Which is effectively what they were wanting to do, is just do the same old boring worship with the same old people, doing the same old thing in a different building. So why would you want to do that? So that was, that was a big uh, stumbling block, really. And in the end, we just said, look, let's, be, let's go with nothing and see what God does. And so... Um, that's that's effectively what we did in the end. We said th this opportunity for the farmers market came up, and said let's grab that with both hands. Um, so again, contextually, I used to be a farmer. Um, I understand farmers. I know how to talk to farmers. Um, I knew I could manage a farmers market. So we ended up buying a little stall, and um, you know we sell tea, coffee, and cake at the stall. Raise funds for local youth work charity, and have all kinds of pastoral conversations and spiritual conversations with the with people who would never come to a church on a Sunday morning and there they are having conversations in our little stall tent about God, you know, and um, much better. But we started off with nothing. We took the risk of going with nothing and seeing what God would do. And that's one of the biggest hurdles to get over is to take a risk with God to go and do something that's actually quite different and see what comes of it. Great. Well, we're getting a couple questions left. Uh, this one is: um, Do you think the word, sorry, do you think the word church should apply to traditional groups, and that new gatherings like what you've just been talking about of people, um, which don't have a building or they're not building based, should be called something else? And would this help both groups feel a bit less threatened by change? <laughs> Playing with words there, aren't we? What does the word church mean? Church, church, effectively is a gathering of people who have centred themselves around Jesus. That's what it is. And it's not about whether you meet in a building or not. You know, it's that gathering of people centred around Jesus. So whether that's in a market stall or whether that's in, in a traditional church building, um, the, the word church still applies. Um, what, what folks have been kind of talking about over the last half dozen years or more really is... Um, in terms of the kind of thing that we were doing in Walthamstow, um, a term that was often used was uh, missional communities of faith, uh, which you know you could say um, is another way of saying church. Actually, <laughs> a church should be a missional community of faith, don't you think? You know, church exists because of Jesus' love for the world, uh, and um, and and about coming and doing something about that. Uh, didn't sit around and just. Um, do nothing and expect everybody to come to him. He was around and moving about and doing stuff. And I think churches uh, need to be involved in mission as their reason for being, actually. you know. So um, I understand why people can have posed the question, but I think they're kind of playing with words, really, because the words have the same meaning. OK, and finally, um, takes us on a sort of a slightly different line but the question is the majority of people seem to believe in a sort of God but they have a lot more problem with Jesus but no problem with Julius Caesar both historical they're both historical facts um, but why do you think problem people have this problem with Jesus uh, well yeah I think 
from a source document perspective, historically there is actually more evidence for the existence of Jesus than for Julius Caesar. But um, there's always the, the, the history programs about what the Romans did for us, and that kind of stuff. And they're always put in a much more positive light than what the church has done for us over the, year, <laughs> the last 2,000 years. So I, I think probably underneath it there's a... There's a um, There's a deeper question of whether you want to um, want to believe that um, Jesus was historical or not. Because if you do, then you've got to be faced with who he was and what that means for the world. Um, so that kind of question. I, it, it's interesting that when you talk with people about Jesus, they actually have less of a problem with Jesus than they do with the church, actually. Um, and people often, often, well sometimes anyway, they don't connect church and Jesus with the same thing. <laughs> they don't seem to think that the church is meant to be an expression of people who follow Jesus and centre their lives around Jesus. I had a mate who used to say, um, he used to do a talk some years ago that, that was called Jesus OK, the church no way. The people were actually very happy with the person of Jesus and who he was and what he taught and how he lived and stuff. But it's the kind of difficulties that the followers of Jesus have got ourselves, ourselves into over the last 2,000 years. So that kind of question around the historical fact of Jesus and of Caesar, I think there's a deeper question underneath that as to whether or not you want to um, believe that one or the other existed and then if you do, where that leads to. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time, Tony. Yeah, that's been really helpful and I hope when I get this back to all the whole people uh, enjoy watching it. Yeah, well, good on you. Thanks, mate.